about a year ago, Brett Yormark stepped in as commissioner of the Big 12 Conference. And many of us wondered why. The future of the league looked at best bleak after the announcement by Oklahoma and Texas that they would be leaving the Big 12 after the current media rights deal and joining the mighty SEC. And when Yormark proclaimed that the Big 12 was open for business <laughs> at the Big 12 media days in July of 2022, a lot of people wondered out loud how long that was going to be true. Despite the fact that outgoing Big 12 sleepyhead commissioner Bob Bowlesby had awoken from his slumber shortly after Oklahoma and Texas made their announcement and finally added four new schools to the league's roster, most people just expected that it was too little too late. The popular belief among the college football world was that the best that Yormark was going to come up with was a league of pomp and circumstance. Um, a conference without the Sooners and Longhorns and those 11 national championships that they have between them doesn't offer a ton of relevancy for moving forward. Um, I mean, you can put on a show with as many fireworks as a Beyonce and Jay-Z world tour. You can brand and paint this conference as new, young, and hip. But in the end, it was still destined to masquerade as a Power 5 conference when in all actuality it was little more than a G5 conference. And the truth is that with the SEC and Big Ten both growing, uh, they're now going to be at 16 teams each, and there's a possibility that this growth is going to continue. It could be this summer. Um, the Big 12 may still prove to be unable to keep up with the big boys. But your mark has proven that he is one. It's actually Pac-12 commissioner George Klyavkov that seems to be in over his head. When he failed to convince his member presidents in the summer of 2021 to finish off the Big 12, to invite Baylor and Oklahoma State and Texas Tech and TCU into the conference so that you could solidify yourself as a power five conference that means something. You inadvertently gave your mark and his new league a stay of execution. And now it's Klyavkov and the pack who's next are in the noose. To the Hall of Fame College Football Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Watkins, and if you love college football, you're definitely in the right place. So before you forget, smash that red subscriber button, like our videos, and don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss one moment of the Hall of Fame College Football Podcast. Folks, the truth be told, if Brett Yormark had been a college football lifer, this would not have worked out <laughs> near as well because the truth of it is there were so many things that have happened that should have spelled the end of the big 12 conference, even over the last <laughs> shoot 15 years, but certainly over the last two to three, the last 18 months, so many things that should have signaled the end of the conference. So had he come in as a former athletic director, coach, whatever, working through the administration at colleges until he became a commissioner, 
not looking at it from a completely new angle and only looking at how to make a situation, a completely unwinnable situation at that better. And for a conference that had to replace, well, for a conference that he stepped into the lead of after years of mismanagement by Bob Bowlesby and before that, Dan Beebe, um, This is just, it's never would have worked out in the way that it has. Bowlesby could not have remained in the commissioner's seat if the conference had wanted him to, to be honest with you. He couldn't have. <clears throat> not after he fired off a, angrily fired off a cease and desist letter to the Big 12 Conference's largest TV partner, ESPN, with completely unsubstantiated claims of collusion between ESPN, Oklahoma, Texas, and the Southeastern Conference. No, the, the league very nearly faced what could only be explained as a death knell uh, over that lack of leadership by Bowlesby, <laughs> who at the time when Oklahoma and Texas made the decision to accept the invitation by the SEC, he decided to point his anger and call public enemy number one, um, <laughs> ESPN, the biggest television partner the conference had <clears throat> before that you had dan Beebe, who fell asleep on the job while the longhorn network was thought up and put into play by espn and ut <clears throat> but if bosby didn't know that you, that ou wanted out of the conference um then he had to have had his head in the sand been asleep on the job um, long before 2021. I mean, there was at least two other times since 2012 that Oklahoma had attempted to pack up and leave along with other members of the conference. Everybody's upset aside from Oklahoma or aside from Texas right now at Oklahoma and, and Texas, but um tend to believe that a lot of that has to do with the fact that they weren't invited this time. No matter who was at fault for the departure of the cash cows, though, there was no way that Bowlesby could have stayed on to and brought this to a place for the Big 12 where they have a chance right now not only to survive, what 18 months ago looked like a completely untenable situation that was destined to end in the end of the conference as we know it, or and period end of the conference. But what's funny is is that it took another it took another conference commissioner messing up about as much as he possibly could in order for the for the Big 12 to rebound like this. And make no mistake about it, it definitely took Brett Yormark being an outsider <clears throat> and knowing how to get a deal done and knowing what's important, not getting caught up in the crap and the pettiness that goes on between conferences and schools within the conference and just Jealousy and money and everything else. Now, make no mistake about it. Brett Yormark is absolutely money-driven. He is about winning and winning in every way. But as I said in the opening, <clears throat> when he took the job, it, 
it seemed to a lot of people it was like, well, what a waste. You know what? I mean, he obviously was very smart. He obviously had a different thought process in mind on how to go about keeping this thing together. But as I said, <clears throat> it very easily couldn't, it, it shouldn't have mattered because you had another long time conference and school administrator moving up through the ranks and learning to do things wrong through his past mentor, Larry Scott at the PAC 12 <laughs> and make no mistake. The PAC 12 is for all intents and purposes done. There is absolutely just no way that you should be able to re I don't see how they rebound from this. And the reason for it is, uh, I mean, I guess you could in terms of if you want to believe that all of a sudden Brett Yormark is going to take a stupid pill, but nothing has shown us over the last year that that's the case. He has not, uh, he has not been prone to diarrhea of the mouth or putting himself in a position that he cannot actually back up. <clears throat> the Pac-12 has been in pursuit of a deal comparable to that of the Big 12. And this comes following a period last year when Brett Yormark approached George Klyavkov with the idea of merging the two conferences in some way to stave off elimination of what appears to be heading towards a big two, not a power five, a power two. <clears throat> That's probably going to come down the line, but make no mistake. It's on the way. The pursuit of that TV deal in which your mark jumped ahead and secured $31 million per school. Flexible if you added more later. Um, it's not going well for the Pac-12. In fact, it's even looked as if it's not. Uh, even Pac-12 presidents who have been... <clears throat> Bound and determined that they would stay in that conference. They want zero to do with the Big 12, as you started noticing really quickly during last summer when they briefly discussed merging. It ended up in a situation where your mark did not feel like it was anything that they were doing was, from what I could tell, productive or leaning towards doing it. And there's no surprise here. Because when Oklahoma and Texas made the decision in 2021 to join the SEC after the 2024 season at the latest, there was a deal on the table for them to get Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, um, TCU, Baylor, could be a number of others, but they were looking at four. Um, and I'm not positive that all those are correct. I know that they were talking about four programs coming into the league. This would have solidified the Pac-12 prior to USC and UCLA a year later jumping ship and following the cash out to the Midwest and to the Big Ten. Now, had they been able to do that, you're looking at 12 plus four, that's 16, you automatically become the third of the big three. <clears throat> they were, Klyavkov was unable to talk his presidents into doing so a year later, despite Kevin Warren of the Big Ten agreeing with the ACC and Klyavkov of the Pac-12 that they would not uh, poach each other's teams. He did just that, taking the USC and UCLA and essentially 
putting them on notice. Now, at this point, this was the opening <clears throat> that your mark needed. And rather than sit on his hands, he didn't. He immediately scrambled to decide to, hey, let's uh let's go ahead and start early on our negotiations with the big uh with ESPN and Fox on renewal for the 2025 20, season of our deal. This was probably the next smartest thing that could have happened. And here's why. 12. Certainly didn't leave any money on the table. As you're reading now, you know, the media landscape's changing. The, the, the big media companies are really more focused on what they need versus what they want. I think we're reading about that every day. It's a changing la landscape. When I was in Phoenix, you know, everyone was there talking to the media partners. I mean, think about UFC being out there right now, the NBA, CFP, WWE. It, it, it's, a, it's a, you know, crowded space right now. And by going early, I was able to gain the attention of arguably two of the biggest media brands in the world. And they saw our vision. Uh, they realized where we were going. They, they liked it and they doubled down on us. So um, for all the right reasons, we went early. And, and I think that decision today is looking even better and better. Oh, and isn't it though? Absolutely better and better. And if you heard him in that, it was such a big deal on that deal because of the fact that as he said, when it, at the Super Bowl is what he was talking about, everybody's out there talking to these media giants, and this is a, as he called it, a completely packed out landscape. The, you have to fight for space. There's not enough space. And that just goes to show you that why the Pac-12 is having such a hard time. But you've had rumblings from unnamed Pac-12 presidents who – you know, even talking to guys like John Wilner and Conzano, these are, and which are reporters who are definitely pro Pac-12. They went to Pac-12 schools. They cover the Pac-12 still. Um, <clears throat> Kliavkov's estimation and, frankly, flippant attitude towards Brett Yormark in the Big 12 is is just as much of what hurt him and what continues to hurt him and why this conference that just a year ago looked like it could nail the coffin shut for the Big 12 now looks like its own coffin is being nailed shut. Just yesterday, Ohio State pulled out of its series that was supposed to start in 2024 with the University of Washington. That signals a couple of different things. We'll get into that in just a second. Klyavkov has been meeting with the presidents of SMU in Dallas, Southern Methodist University. Also with uh, the long-snubbed San Diego State University, who is long, as much as they've wanted to be a member of the Pac-12 for very many years, appear that maybe that's not the case anymore. Why do I say that? Because it hasn't happened still. We're talking about you have seven months until the start of the 2023 season, which is the final season under which the Pac-12 is under contract for its media rights. As of right now, and as you saw on that video with Brett Yormark, the only two networks quote unquote that are interested in Pac-12 football Amazon for streaming and ESPN Fox has pulled out of the deal they have there are reports that recently Klavkov and the Pac-12 reached out to CBS and even Turner Broadcasting TBS a cable network about taking some of its inventory both declined. There's two left. 
which means they will never get close. This Monday you saw the, and this is such a weird deal, a joint statement from the 10 members of the Pac-12 conference, the board, the 10 board members. Let me share it with you here. Okay, so it says the 10, 12, the 10 Pac-12 universities, the 10 Pac-12 universities look forward to consummating successful media rights deals in the very near future based on positive conversations with multiple potential media rights partners. I guess that means two. Over the past weeks, we remain highly confident in our future growth and success as a conference and united in our commitment to one another. Um, I'm not sure how united they are. As I said, even John Wilner and uh, Kanzano, who are longtime sports reporters, pack favoring sports reporters, have noted that there are a number of university presidents who feel like they were misled by Klyavkov. And, you know, furthermore, that his estimation of what they should get on their renegotiate, uh, on their negotiation of their media rights deals was the fact it's way low. And that's clear because they haven't signed anything yet. Not only that, but it, it seems to me like with not so little time left, if if you know at this point that you're down to your best options for expansion are SMU and SDSU, why is there not an offer there? Why is there not a clear – is it is there an offer there and nobody has – there's no answer to it yet? They're balking at it? Uh, have the, Are they for some stupid reason not still offering to bring them into their conferences? I've been saying all week that I feel like as much as they're talking about the Big 12 going after the four corner schools, Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, Colorado, as much as they've talked about that, I think that you could probably end this whole thing if you just stopped SDSU and SMU from going to the Pac-12. If you offered them to come in, then you could still go get those four corner schools. That would leave you with uh 18 members you could still have room to do more now what did the what does it mean for ohio state to have canceled its series coming up with washington it could mean a lot of things what it really means though to me is and before we get too much further ahead of this the fact that that Brett Yormark pushed to negotiate that contract earlier than he needed to. Wasn't flipping about it. Wasn't, I mean, he has come in and immediately gone to work. He's put his nose down. He doesn't care about the politics of college sports. He did. He's, this is the first time he's ever been a part of it. He didn't need to worry about the, you know, any kind of, quote partnerships, handshake deals or any of that with these other conferences because flat out he doesn't know any of these guys. And if he does, not very well. What he does know how to do is make deals. Smartly, when this past week it started to look as if Texas and Oklahoma were indeed going to end up staying in the Big 12 until 2025, he went back to work with Fox with Oklahoma and Texas and got a deal done to let them out early so that he could focus on what's at hand by, you know, but the PAC 12 is out here putting out these quote unquote, we are, you know, confident in our future growth and, and signing a deal. Why would you say that? Why do you need to tell us that instead of just showing us that you actually have a deal? There's clearly something else going on. It almost seems like 
when you hear somebody in a, an athletic director give a coach the, you know, seal of approval or, you know, we're behind him, that's the death nail every time. They might as well just fire him that day because you know they're gone immediately. Uh, so to me, <clears throat> Pac-12 is seven months away from its final season under this current media deal. Then came the statement on Monday, and yet still there's no new members as of today, Friday. The bids are down to just ESPN and Amazon, so they're bidding against themselves. They don't have to go up. In fact, they don't even need any more inventory. ESPN is a year away from exclusively carrying the SEC, 16-team SEC. Nobody else is, is carrying it with them. They'll also be carrying uh, the lion's share of the Big 12. You have the you have Fox, who has opted out of even negotiating uh, with the Pac-12, <clears throat> partly over apparent, well, what it, what's pretty apparent to me as Klyavkov and the Pac-12 being unhappy with them over their uh, basically doing what Bob Bowlesby was doing with ESPN and blaming, to some extent, Fox on USC and UCLA bolting to the Big Ten for their $100 million a year. <laughs> Meanwhile, you have, you know, <laughs> you have Brett Yormark going and asking to speak to these guys early, making a deal. He doesn't want to fight with them. He wants to make a deal with them and get paid and keep his conference alive. What a novel idea. <laughs> what a novel idea. Um, but so in any event, Fox is out, CBS is out of the negotiations, Turner even is out of the negotiations. All that's left is Amazon and ESPN. I, apparently Apple's not interested anymore. I don't know what's going on there. And as of Thursday, Ohio state is out of playing Washington. Now, as I said, there's a couple of ways that you can look at this. Is that because, I mean, you saw a year ago that Greg Sankey had shut down proposed uh, non-conference games between both the University of Tennessee in Oklahoma, Georgia and Oklahoma as well. <clears throat> because they was expected that they were going to come in a year early in 2024. It turns out that's the case. Is that maybe a reason why Ohio State has canceled its series without saying that that's the case, that why it's canceled its series with Washington and, by the way, is willing to cough up half a million dollars to do so, to break that contract? Even if not, even if that's not why, it makes sense why they would have given this thing up and, and happily pay their half a million dollars to do so. It's generally a tough trip for a Midwest team like Ohio State or anybody for that matter to make the trip all the way to the West Coast. There's a big time difference, everything else. But, and in this case, what are you really gaining from it? If you beat this Washington team, which they're a good team, don't get me wrong. I'm not, it's not what I'm getting at. But in 2024, we don't know what they're going to look like. And if the Pac 12, if they don't make a move soon, it could hurt them. It's definitely going to hurt them in recruiting. So why do you need to go out there and expose yourself in a situation that it doesn't really help you in recruiting? Because chances are nobody's going to see the game. The Pac-12 loves to play these after dark games that start at 10 o'clock on the East Coast. Could be freaking two in the morning by the time they get over with. It's midnight on the West Coast. So... It really didn't make a whole lot of sense. Now they can turn around and use those games to play UCLA, USC instead in a conference game. It helps them recruit against UCLA and USC. It's in California instead of Washington, which is where they want to get their recruiting in. 
Uh, it makes plenty of sense. But it also signals that either Washington and Oregon are getting ready to, to get poached, or they could be in talks with Brett Yormark. Either way, something doesn't look right for, again, the Pac-12. Again, why is SDSU and SMU not signed already? There's a lot of feet dragging going on here. And either either George Klyavkov is not learning any lesson and is continuing to uh, to slow roll everything, or it appears that nobody wants to come because they see the writing on the walls that, listen, unless you get a deal done and and we know that your other schools are staying, why would why would they do it? And here, if you're Arizona State or Arizona or Utah, even and Utah's being awfully weird, or maybe it's just their fans. I don't know about <clears throat> showing their allegiance to the Pac-12 that they've won it the past couple of years, and they're still not really up in the running of of people that care about them. Um, I I think that you should hurry up and get into the Big Twelve if you can. I think that the Big Twelve would behoove from Utah, especially Colorado with Coach Prime and all the amazing opportunities to promote around that program and what you expect to see coming soon. Um, <laughs> but even you've got – and you've got a guy like Tenny, Kenny Dillingham there at Arizona State that more than likely is going to turn this thing around. You add those four teams – to that conference. I mean, you don't have to, I don't have to tell you that kills the PAC 12 completely. You would, you could rebrand the entire mountain West after that. And it's still not going to matter. Still not going to matter. You're still a G five because that's what the mountain West is. And chances are when those, when those dominoes fall, you might get to keep Oregon, Oregon, or Oregon state, um, Washington State, Oregon would be going somewhere as well, either to the Big Ten, which I'm, I know that's who they're holding out for. So is Washington. But it depends on what's going on. I, In any event, the, the bottom line to this entire video is, is that Brett Yormark has, in the face of incompetence, at conference commissioner positions and you've seen it in the big 12 you've seen it in the pac 12 it's so much more glaring because of the fact that you have a guy like brett yormark who is just hitting every ball out of the park he doesn't focus on doing a bunch of this he goes to work he had his you know the most I, you hear him say a whole lot of was you know, we're open for business. He's proven that he is. He's a deal maker. And the Big 12 has got to be excited to have him. And if you are if you are one of these teams, these, these schools that is potentially looking for a place to play, I mean, I would think that you would want a guy with this kind of leadership to be your commissioner. If you could get to the Big 10, I get it. You could get to the SEC. I get it. But you could definitely do worse than Brett Yormark. Folks, let us know what you think on this. Let Drop a comment in the section here below. Don't forget that you can support the show uh, with tips through Venmo right below me on this side. or And you can always buy podcast merchandise right below me here at the at the address there as well. We've got a lot of new, um, we've got some new merchandise in that store as well. Go in there, check it out. You've got some horns down emoji uh, t-shirts. They're pretty fun. Um, you can always go to the Fanatics Partner Store, save up to 65% off everything in the store just for using our link. We get a small commission for you making a purchase. You obviously get discounts, sometimes free shipping. Could be a lot of different things. It's a win-win situation. If you're not already a subscriber, please hit the button and become one today. And I hope that you will hit that like button as well. That is as free as it gets, and it helps us tremendously uh, moving forward. I got to tell you, I again, 
<clears throat> I don't think that it's going to be a whole lot longer. It could be by the end of the day. I hope that I get this video done and edited and in before something new happens. Something tells me that you may not. Stay tuned. We will hit you as soon as we hear anything new. And I, and I suspect that something's coming. Uh, there's just a lot of signals saying that there's about to be some more landscape changes. And after the last two years of, you know, off season, would you expect anything else? Folks, thanks a lot for joining me. I will see you on the next one.